Racing thoroughbreds in Aiken has been a big part of the culture for nearly a century. Everywhere you go in Aiken, you can see equestrian influence. As a little girl growing up in Columbia County, I was obsessed with horses, and I didn't know until just a few years ago that there's a highly respected horse racing community just across the river. Flag is up, and they are off. It all began after the Civil War when rich northerners discovered that Augusta, North Augusta, and Aiken were a beautiful and warm place to spend the winters. Lisa Hall, museum coordinator for the Aiken Thoroughbred Racing Hall of Fame tells me many of them brought their horses with them. And they realized with the sandy soil here and the temperature that it would have been a perfect place for them to bring their, their horses here and train them here. The wealthy played polo and raced their thoroughbreds while they wintered in Aiken. One popular type of horse racing was steeplechase. Jessica Miller is the event manager for the Aiken Steeplechase Association. She says that steeplechase had its beginnings in Ireland as the result of a bet between two brothers to see who was the fastest rider. So the name steeplechase originated from the sport in Ireland where they would race the horses from one church steeple to the next, so hence the name steeplechase. When most people think of horse racing, they think of the Kentucky Derby, which is flat racing on a flat dirt or turf track with no obstacles. And Mitchell Pisano is on the board of directors for the Aiken Steeplechase Association. She explains that steeplechase races are a little different. In the case of steeplechase, over any variety of fences, depending on where you are, hurdles, timber, stone walls with riders. One wealthy man from New York came to Aiken in the 1800s as a winter colonist. His name, well known in Aiken today, Thomas Hitchcock. Hitchcock bought 3,000 acres of land where he built a house and a steeplechase training center. He's known as the father of American steeplechasing. In 1930, Hitchcock, along with Harry Worcester Smith and Temple Guathme, organized the first steeplechase race in Aiken. And Thomas Hitchcock was one of the original winter colonists um, who the Hitchcock Woods is named for. And the Aiken steeplechase, um, the first races were held in Hitchcock Woods over the Aiken Hound drag lines. Racing in the United States was suspended during World War II when so many men went to Europe to fight. During the Second World War, there were no boys. Um, so that would mean no jockeys, um, possibly no trainers. Now the second jewel in the Aiken Triple Crown, the Aiken Steeplechase, was brought back by a group of thoroughbred owners and trainers. From, uh, I believe it was 1967, when Ford Conger revived the Aiken Steeplechase and did it at what was then called the Clark Field. And Clark Field was named after him. The Aiken Steeplechase continued to grow and become more popular, now with around 30,000 patrons attending each spring. In 2019, the Aiken Steeplechase Association built a new track and, after taking two years off because of the pandemic, began racing again. The spring and fall meets are part of a national racing circuit. Aiken, Camden, and Charleston run the only three sanctioned NSA meets in South Carolina. The first jewel in the Aiken Triple Crown is the Aiken Trials held at the Aiken Training Track. Aiken Training Track Vice President Barry Bornstein says the race has started in 1942. It's the first race for many young horses. Um, this is the first time they have an opportunity to run with other horses and also before a crowd. Um, horses will come out here and if anything is new in the environment, they'll react to it. The trials draw tens of thousands of spectators each year. Dozens of horses that trained at the track and ran in the trials have gone on to become champions of races like the Kentucky Derby. The third jewel in the Aiken Triple Crown used to be harness racing, but in recent years, the Pacers and Polo matches took its place. Aiken is very well known in the flat racing world for its thoroughbred training facilities, specifically the Aiken Training Track. It was built in 1941 by winter colonist Fred Post. They were polo players, but they bought the property where the current Aiken Training Track is located. And they, along with some other folks here in town, uh, Pete Bostwick and, and some of the other folks, uh, decided let's convert the training track area, which was full of polo fields at that time, and let's make a regular training track. Bornstein says Post recognized that conditions were perfect for training. Weather is one. Um, and secondly, the makeup, when you want it, the surface to be, you know, as perfect as possible. You don't want it over, <clears throat> over wet. You don't want it uh, too dry. And you want it to be also in a place where you can cushion the horses when they run. The track opened in November of 1941, and by spring of 1942, there were 200 horses booked to train there. Bornstein tells me that the training track soon became one of the most popular tracks in the southeast. Some of the top Barns in, in the 40s, 50s, 60s were here. Um, we were home at one time to the Dolly Godolphin 
um, uh, barn, uh, stable, and of course, for over 40 years, we were home to Dogwood Stables and the late Cart Campbell, who is, is absolutely was an icon and still is an icon uh, in, the, in, in uh, thoroughbred racing. The Darley Godolphin Stables is owned by the Vice President of the United Arab Emirates, who is also the ruler of Dubai. He is just one of many famous thoroughbred owners who use the Aiken training track. One of them was Bing Crosby. He had a stable named Bingling. Elizabeth Arden, who was the makeup queen in, in the, you know, the 50s, 60s, 70s, had her stable here in Aiken. It was called Main Chance Stable. Red Smith, who was uh, affiliated with Seabiscuit, brought some horses here to train. There's a single live oak tree that sits in the middle of the track known as Blue Peter's Tree. Blue Peter was from Aiken and won eight out of the ten races he ran and was named the 1948 champion two-year-old male horse of the year. Blue Peter's grandsire was the famous man of war and his sire, War Admiral, both Hall of Fame horses. He was getting a reputation for being unbeatable and was the favorite to win the 1949 Kentucky Derby when he became ill. And unfortunately, when he was here training, he came down with a stomach illness. Um, it could have been colic, it could have been something else. There's really not a lot of documentation on exactly what it is. So they ended up having to lay him up the entire year. He didn't race for a whole year. Blue Peter began training again and seemed to be doing well. But tragedy struck when he developed pneumonia and died in a stall at the Reagan training track on January 12, 1950. So there is a large live oak tree called Blue Peter's Tree, which is near the clocker stand, and that is where he is buried. And the most unique thing about that is his grandfather's man of war was buried whole in a casket and had a funeral, and he's buried up in Kentucky. They did the same thing for Blue Peter. The story touched so many in the racing world that Blue Peter's Tree became the logo for the Aiken training track. Over the years, the track has developed a reputation for excellence in the horse racing world. This is considered one of the top training facilities for thoroughbreds in the country. Horses are such a huge part of the Aiken lifestyle that the city is one of very few where horses have the right of way. One other thing is that we have all these dirt roads right around the track and that's a great, we call it hacking. And you can, beyond taking your horse onto the track, you can hack right on the streets here and literally go into the uh, Hitchcock Woods. Thoroughbred racing is so important in Aiken, it is documented in the Aiken Thoroughbred Racing Hall of Fame and Museum. It opened in 1977 and is located at the old carriage house at Hopeland Gardens. All of the featured horses trained in Aiken and were named a National Horse of the Year. Well, probably our famous, most famous horse is Kelso who ran uh, in the 60s. Kelso was the national trained horse of the year five years in a row from 60 to 65. You won't ever see that again. You might see a, a, a horse nowadays win one or two national championships, but not the five, because now there's more of a Let's let them win a Kentucky Derby and get them out to the breeding shed. Kelso was born in 1957 and like his competitor, Blue Peter, came down from Man of War. He was not known for being a well-mannered horse, but it didn't stop him from 21 major wins. Kelso still holds the world record for fastest two miles on dirt in the 1964 Jockey Club Gold Cup, which he won five times in a row. Another horse of note is Sea Hero, who is special, though not in the Hall of Fame, because he didn't hold the title of National Horse of the Year. He trained here in Aiken in 92, early 93, and won the 93 Derby. His owner, Paul Mellon, who owned Rokeby Stables, and his trainer, Mac Miller, neither one of them had ever won one of the Triple Crown races. And this turned out to be their last opportunity, and Sea Hero won. When Blue Peter pulled out of the 1949 Kentucky Derby, another Aiken-trained horse named K-Pot became a favorite to win. He missed winning the Derby by a neck, but he won the Belmont and the Preakness. So we missed out on a Triple Crown horse by a neck. So close. Yes, it's very close. <laughs> and we've had several horses win two out of the three, but none that close came that close but him. Hey, CSRA, that's just part of your hometown history. In Aiken, Kim Vickers, WJBF News Channel 6.